Hey guys, Nicole here with Obscure Reptiles and Caging and today we're going to be talking about blue-eyed Lucy's. So let's get started. Hey guys, so for anyone who's been watching us for a while, this is Mateo. He's been in a few videos, including the first video we ever shot, uh, which was about a prolapse. Um, and for those of you who've never seen it, that video not only explains what the prolapse is, but actually how to help prevent it or help get rid of it. Um, but this is Mateo. He's definitely on the smaller side uh, for his age. He's like seven or eight years old, but because of that prolapse, we've always fed him a lot smaller meals. That way it never came back out and he's been doing great and hasn't had any kind of issues since he was a baby. So he's doing really well and he's also a proven breeder. Um, I got a few other blue-eyed Lucy's, but right now looks like they're getting closer to ovulation or have ovulated, so I don't want to mess with them too much, but I do have quite a few pictures. For anyone who is newer to snakes, blue-eyed Lucy's is just a general term for a white snake with blue eyes. You can have red-eyed Lucy's and you can also have black-eyed Lucy's, uh, but today we're just going to be specifically talking about uh, blue-eyed Lucy's or blue-eyed leucistics. Leucism is not only found in ball pythons, it's actually found in quite a few other species, including alligators, buffaloes, giraffe, deer, and even pet hedgehogs. Um, it's not the same as albinism or being an albino, uh, that is the lack of color. Blue-eyed leucistics is completely different. It's actually a complete loss of all pigment. That's why their eyes are actually blue because they actually have no color in their eyes, which causes blue eyes. Most other types of ball pythons, unless they're albino, will actually have a uh, more brown colored eye. But if you mix things with like pastel, you can get green eyes in ball pythons. But these guys are special because of that blue eye. But I'm going to explain to you not only how do you breed them, the differences between them. Back around 1992 is when the first blue-eyed Lucy or blue-eyed leucistic ball python was actually hatched and it sold for around $10,000. Uh, nowadays you can get them, um, I normally sell my males for $275 and females are always a little bit more, but you can normally find them for anywhere between $300 to $700 now. Again, males and females. Females are always more expensive for just about any ball python. These guys, they're pretty reasonably priced now compared to what they used to be. If I had to list the top three ball python morphs, it would be pied, blue-eyed lucies, and albinos. Those are the top three things people almost always want, especially people who want a cool pet. Um, but these are one of my top favorites. That's why I got him so long ago. I think it's an awesome, awesome snake. Um, he's my personal favorite, and he's also the only snake to have ever bitten me. Um, as you can see, he's very friendly, um, and because of that, I always just reach in and grab him. And that's how the one and only time I got bit was not using a hook to get him out, which is what I like to do. So I broke my own rule, basically. But he is a super lesser. There are a few different ways to get blue-eyed Lucy's. But the cleanest and I, my personal favorite would be a super lesser. Here's a picture of a lesser or a butter. You can put a lesser to a lesser, a lesser to a butter, a butter to a butter, and you will always get a, at least some of the babies will be a pure white snake like him with no patterns at all. I'm going to try to get some footage of him under a black light that I have. He has absolutely no pattern. Now the female I have is a little bit different. She does have pattern, but she I think is a little bit different. So we could talk about her later or in a different video. Just the standard Blue Eye Lucy Super Lesser has no pattern. You can also use Mojave. Um, you can do a Mojave to a Mojave. You can do Mojave to a Lesser. You can mix all those together. But when it, you start putting Mojave in, you will either start to see a yellow stripe down their spine. They will have either a gray slate or a very dark gray head. Their whole bodies can actually be sort of gray. I'm going to try to find footage or pictures of all these different things to put in for you guys to be able to see. But the only way to get a pure white snake normally is a lesser to a lesser, lesser to a butter, or a butter to a butter. You can even use Phantom, uh, which looks very, very similar to Mojave. And you can also use the Russo gene, but those get a little bit more complicated. Um, for somebody who's starting out, the simplest way is to get either a lesser or a Mojave. Breed them to something else that has either of those genes. When breeding these guys, um, I like to breed him to either my lesser pinstripe, I used to have a lesser normal lesser female. The worst thing I would say about breeding these guys is it really restricts what you can breed with it. So for example when I put him with let's say my lesser pinstripe and I get a blue-eyed Lucy baby, looks great, looks awesome. Under the black light sometimes you can see a little bit of a pattern. For example 
if he went with a lesser pinstripe and there was a blue-eyed Lucy baby, there's also a 50-50 chance that that baby also has pinstripe in it. And really the only true way to be able to tell under blacklight, yes, sometimes you can see a pattern, but normally the only way to 100% tell is actually breeding out that animal. So it makes it a lot harder to be able to price that animal, to tell or guarantee any so sort of genetics. And another thing that kind of makes it difficult is I like to work with a lot of pied stuff. I have a Mojave pied. Lesser pieds actually are pure white, so you lose the whole pied, and a lot of them actually have very small heads or very large eyes, um, and those are issues you can get when you start putting lesser with the pieds. Um, if it's a multi-gene, normally it's not too much of an issue. Another kind of strange thing with these guys is when they're going to shed, their whole body turns super pink. You can actually see he's a little bit pink. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but these guys turn super, super pink. Uh, when they're going into shed and the other thing is they get so dirty um i used to when i first ever kept ball pythons um, i used to use it was like a construction paper that came in a huge roll for like shipping stuff and i used to use that paper but even being a brown paper his belly would turn brown from the paper one time i was out of it tried newspaper in the bottom and it was only in there for a couple of days and he actually had print on his belly because he'd go into his water dish and then he'd lay on it and it, the print would actually show up on his body. So you want to make sure you're using a real type of bedding with these guys. You're not going to be able to get away with something like newspaper or um, even regular paper can transfer onto these guys because they are so white. I think they're one of the coolest morphs out there. They're definitely one of the most popular. Especially if you're getting into breeding, I would highly recommend trying to breed some of these. These are what people normally ask for, at least for me. Uh, and it's a really awesome snake to be able to produce, but it's very easy to have. Having a male super lesser like this, you can put it into just about any combo, um, and it really helps when you're trying to produce more, or you just want to always make sure you transfer on lesser, because if you have a super lesser like this and you breed it to, like let's say, a GHI, you're going to be getting lesser GHIs. But another really cool thing, like my female, she's a lesser and a Mojave. So when you breed her, you can not only get, like, for example, let's say we bred her to a GHI. You're going to get GHI Lessers and GHI Mojaves and Blue-Eyed Lucies. We're going to try to put some footage in right now of my female Blue-Eyed Lucy, Try not to bother her too much. But you can see this strange pattern on her. Um, I don't think it's because she has other genetics. I think she actually is what is called a chimera, which is different than a paradox. Here's a picture of a Blue-Eyed Lucy paradox. He is actually the father of. Uh, this is from 2020 I produced this snake. In normal paradoxing, it's just the color, it's just the genetics. You can't even really breed for it. Like, let's say you have a paradox snake and you're trying to breed it to other things. There's no guarantee that that paradox is going to breed. It's not something you can really breed for. It's more random. Um, but I am pretty positive the mom is actually a chimera. And what a chimera is, is there were twins in an egg. So two snakes with two different genetics or sometimes the same genetics, and they kind of morph together into one snake. Blue-Eyed Lucy female, I paired her, her first time she ever had babies was, because she's a lesser Mojave, this is a super lesser, I put them together, and I ended up getting normal lessers, normal Mojaves, and one Blue-Eyed Lucy, which was a paradox. Blue-Eyed Lucy to a Blue-Eyed Lucy, all babies should be Blue-Eyed Lucy. And the thing that made me nervous is the fact that Lessers and Mojaves were thrown out, which might mean she is actually a, has the genetics of a Mojave. Proven him many times, he's 100% a super Lesser. No normal baby should have came out of that, like the Lessers and Mojaves. And if she was a Lesser Mojave, like she's supposed to be, then all the babies would have came out Blue-Eyed Lucy. But the fact that she threw those babies leads me to believe she has the out tier, like the exterior and look of a blue-eyed Lucy, but the genetics of a normal Mojave. And by these weird patterns on top of her, when she shouldn't have any patterns at all, kind of also lead me towards that. We're going to try one more breeding. I'm breeding her to a GHI uh, Mojave this year, and we're going to see what she produces. Um, but that's a special case. Normal blue-eyed Lucys don't have that kind of issue. That's just something that I have. Um, but if you're looking into breeding, I would highly recommend getting like Lessers, Mojaves, or just go and get some Blue-Eyed Lucies to put in your collection. Uh, and if you're just looking for a pet, they are awesome. How good a footage it's going to actually be to show how blue his eyes truly are, but they are incredibly, incredibly blue. So that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We do videos every Wednesday, and we'll see you next Wednesday.